Elite Gaming. What's up guys, it's Andrew at Elite Gaming HQ. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about Vega. Right before we get into that, if you guys are worried about the benchmarks for the $350 budget PC build we did yesterday, don't worry, that video will be up later tonight. I'm waiting for everything to finish downloading. And if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to check it out. It's very interesting. And the benchmarks, as I said, will be up tonight. So about Vega, what inspired me to do this video is the leaked pictures. I myself am super excited about Vega, not so excited about the Polaris rebranding, but Vega is definitely promising and before we get into the thick of it vega is supposed to be launched the first half of this year so we don't got much more time so we could be seeing this very soon now i do have some information and i do have some speculation the speculation is that vega will be able to compete with the gtx 1070 and maybe the 1080 that is the idea but what do we have to go on what we have is a Vulcan demo that showed Vega outperforming a GTX 1080 in Doom by at least 10 frames per second. It was pulling around 7, which the usefulness of that could vary. What really matters is the price point. If you could release a GPU that can outperform the GTX 1080 in some games and perform just about as good at it in other games, but yet keep the price down around $400, if that's possible, they could take the market by storm. AMD is saying future generations of games could take advantage of high bandwidth memory designed to upload large data sets directly to the graphics processor rather than handling it with a more hands-on approach as done today. But what exactly is that talking about? Well first we have to talk about their high bandwidth memory or in this case, it would be HPM2. We have seen high bandwidth memory before, and it performed really well with the R9 Fury X card, but it had its limitation. It was limited to four gigabytes of video memory. HPM2 will feature eight gigabytes, which means you could probably put your money on the fact that Vega cards are gonna come standard with eight gigabytes of video memory. They mentioned in 4K, a couple games don't utilize all their video memory properly. They mentioned The Witcher and Fallout 4, and these are mainstream games that are well optimized. So in that theory, a lot of other games haven't been running very well. Rendering a scene is a multi-step process, with graphics cards processing shaders before passing through information on a geometry engine for additional work. Vega speeds things up with the help of primitive shaders that quickly identify the polygons that aren't visible to the players, so that the geometry engine doesn't waste its time on that. Vega also blazes through information at over twice the peak throughput of its predecessors. That includes the new Intelligent Workgroup Distributor to improve load balancing from the very beginning of the pipeline. These tweaks drive home how AMD's infiltration in consoles can benefit PC gamers too. The inspiration for the load balancing tweaks come from console developers used to working closer to the metal than the PC developers, who highlighted it as a potential area for improvement for AMD. So basically, what does all that mean? So it means that Vega is going to run efficiently by rendering the right tasks at the right time that you need them, rather than rendering everything all at once. It seems to me a good idea of this is when you play a game like CSGO, for instance, and you look at the ground and you can get something like 500 frames per second. But then when you look straight ahead, it'll drop down. And I mean, even if it drops down to 120, 180, why is that? Well, because nothing's rendered underneath your feet. There's nothing else for the video card to work on. There's no effects. There's no shades. When you're looking forward, perhaps you're also rendering not only the building that you're looking at, but the interior walls. Now, this is just my thought process on this, but I think what they're trying to get at is that if you're not seeing the interior walls, there's no point in rendering them first, so you can get everything important out of the way first to keep your frame rate high, and then when you enter the building, that had been cached second, but it wouldn't have been relevant information at the time that you're standing outside the building. I think that's what they're getting out here, and I hope that you follow me. If you go back to that DSX Mankind Divided and you take a good look of the two pictures side by side or on top of each other, you can kind of get a good idea of everything that it's rendering at once. So about the Polaris rebranding. For me, I was one step away from buying another RX 480. I know this sounds like a ridiculous problem, but I have some money saved up, and I want my games to run in 1440p max settings. Do I wait and take a gamble with Vega, or do I buy another RX 480? Crossfire and SLI configurations aren't always the best. They come with problems. So a single GPU option would be the best, but then I have to wait. And could I get the value back of my RX 480 if I decide to later on go with a Vega? That's something I really have to consider. See, we have CES 2017 coming up, but last year, AMD showed the RX 480 at CES 2016, but it didn't release until the end of June. I got mine at the very beginning of July. It would be amazing if we could get these cards sooner so we can do some tests on them, because Vega looks really intriguing. 
The other thing is I can't wait for April 11th to get my Ryzen R5 so I can test that and bring that to you guys, do a nice little computer build with that. And for my video where I talk about that, I'll put a card here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little discussion as I'm waiting for all these games to download so we can do the benchmarks on a $350 PC. So if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. And I'm Andrew, and this is Elite Gaming HQ. Thanks for watching, guys.